pro on the airwaves, Danny's going back in time to see where it all started. A nautical journey awaits in Bradwell-on-Sea in Essex. We're off to visit the pirate radio ship that truly rocked the boat of British broadcasting in the 1960s. Peter Moore is the man to tell all. You right, Peter? I hear you want to see a pirate ship. Absolutely, I can't wait. Well, if you're sure, yeah. welcome on board. Oh, I'm excited. Are you, Phil? Go on. Picture the scene. It's the 1960s. The baby boomers were rebels with a cause. Shunning the establishment, they were sparking a revolution from fashion to music. We're on our way to visit the enduring symbol of British youth rebellion, the very first pirate radio station, Radio Caroline. So what was the music scene in Britain like in the early 60s? Rock and roll was coming over from America and British bands were emerging. And you think if you were a music lover, it would be a very good time. But in fact, in the UK, it was enormously difficult to listen to popular music. The year was 1964. Commercial radio didn't exist, and the BBC were only playing around one hour of pop music a week. So the only answer was to go outside of jurisdiction and become pirates and play 24 hours of pop music a day. Since 1964, there have been three Radio Caroline radio ships. We're stepping aboard the MV Ross Revenge. She's been on the go since the early 1980s. Oh, easy as pie. Like a gazelle. You took the words out of my mouth, Phil. Go, girl, go. A Dublin-born maverick, Ronan O'Reilly, would be the man responsible for bringing pop music to the masses. He wanted to manage bands and artists, but he was continually being snubbed and finding there was a monopoly he couldn't break. And he realised the way to do it was put a ship outside British territorial waters, break all the rules and, and play the music he wanted to play. So where about does Caroline come from then? He went to America and saw a picture of Caroline Kennedy in the Oval Office, just playing up and distracting the serious business of government. And he said, well, that's exactly what I want to do, and therefore the name should be Radio Caroline. Oh, it's cool, man. Yeah. On Saturday the 28th of March, Britain's very first pirate radio station was live on the air. So this is Christopher Moore with the first record programme on Radio Caroline. So what was the reaction to the vote? Like, was it successful? It was so successful, within a few weeks of starting, we had an audience of 7 million people. Wow, that's so many people, ain't it? Like and it 7 grew. million. Colossal. And, and it grew. Suddenly, the airwaves were alive with music. 480 tracks a day. Music fans were now being fed 168 hours of new music a week. Uh-oh, looks like someone's been let loose. I want to talk into a little microphone or something, do you know what I mean? Crikey. You're getting right into this rebel DJ malarkey. So I'm broadcasting from Radio Caroline. This is Danny Dyer and I'm playing Ariana Grande. Looks like Phil has other ideas. <laughs> uh. So what was it like to be a Radio Caroline DJ in the pirate years? It was glamorous. It was instant fame and recognition and tremendous career advancement. I mean, Tony Blackburn, Simon D, people like this, they all became household names very quickly and they still have careers today. Like overnight then? Yeah, overnight and enduring. The pirate years of 63 to 67 saw 10 pirate radio stations spring up around Britain, broadcasting to a daily audience of between 10 and 15 million. The government eventually introduced legislation to try and close the pirates down. And indeed, all the pirates did close, apart from Radio Caroline. The reason given was alleged interference to other stations, but by then it was realised that the public wanted all-day pop music radio. So the BBC were told to create Radio One, which is still operating today, of course. And their very first DJ was our very first DJ, Tony Blackburn. Radio Caroline kept steering through the rocky challenges until she was silenced by exasperated UK and Dutch governments in 1989. 
It appears that we are now being boarded by a Dutch tug. How are we all able to survive it then? Well, the chief engineer hid as much equipment as he could and started rebuilding the transmitting part of the ship after they'd gone away. But the listeners were so outraged that they gave us all their record collections. Oh. So we now have probably more records than we started out with. We've got 11,000 records here. That's sort of the cool Caroline effect. It's tremendous goodwill. Radio Caroline is the original pirate ship that paved the way for Britain's musical revolution a gutsy radio ship that continues to command the airwaves today.